Bon Brew with a blue. It's Wednesday. Hope everybody's doing okay. Hope they're staying safe. Had a good weekend that I'm cracking on with this week. And I'm delighted to say it's a pleasure to have Sue Smith joining me now. Um, Sue, thanks very much for coming on. It feels like we've been messaging on Twitter for ages trying to get this sorted out. And for a consequence of our diaries not matching or everything just being yeah. horrendous, we've not been able to do it. <laughs> but it's, I know it's great. It's great it's to finally great great to be to you at last. It is. It's great to actually be on because, like you say, we've been messaging each other for ages and it's just a case of, yeah, just different things. And at the moment, I can't say I'm busy. So, <laughs> no excuses there. <laughs> You've got no excuse. You've got no excuse anymore in that regard. But no, no. It, in all seriousness, it, it's it's great to have you on. And we were just saying then before we we hit record. There, sometimes it's just horrible talking about Everton, isn't it? Because of the way things have been going over over the last year or so, you know, the, the team have played yeah. not very good and stuff like that. And um, you, you you're just saying now you've got to deal with Stephen Warnock most Monday mornings and yeah. stuff like that. So sometimes oh, it's just don't to you. No, it's it's so hard because you. You know, obviously you're, you're watching the games over the Saturday and Sunday and, and you're trying to, you know, watch every game or at least keep across all of the games. But obviously I'm, I'm watching Everton as much as I can. And when I'm seeing the results coming in and, you know, when Everton win, I go in with a massive grin on my face. When we don't, I'm, I'm sort of stood like this. And you've got Stephen walking in, you know, broad shoulders, top of the league and absolutely loving it. So, yeah, I have to deal with him every Monday morning. And, and Rob, who's the presenter, he's a big Chelsea fan. So, yeah, when Chelsea are doing well, he's the same. So, yeah, we need a really good season so that I can, <laughs> I can go in and gloat a little bit. <laughs> yeah, uh, fingers crossed it's, it's not far off. I mean, we'll talk about that a bit oh. later. Uh, just as we've done with, with all our guests, um, just to ask people how, how they're doing. Um, how, how are you finding things at the moment? Are you, are you coping okay? Yeah, it's it's just such a strange situation, isn't it? I think for, for everybody. And what I've tried to do is is get into some sort of routine because I think obviously as a... As a footballer, when I was playing, I was in that routine of, of getting up, doing my training, you know, whatever else, having your lunch, doing a bit more training. And, and you always had something to focus on. The focus was probably the game at the, at the weekend. Similarly with the, the punditry, you know, I've, I've got, you know, different schedules. So I know what I'm doing Monday. I've got the Monday show and then I might have a, a soccer special midweek and a game at the weekend. So it's you always have something to focus on. And then suddenly when this happened, I didn't have anything. You know, and I was a bit like, wow, what, what am I going to do here? So I'm, I'm actually training like I'm back playing. I'm training like pretty much twice a day at the moment. So I'm feeling good with that. But just trying to like maybe get up at a similar time, go to bed at a similar time. Um, I've had so much more time to catch up with family and friends via like Zoom and, and things like that, which has been nice. Um, and I suppose it's just trying to, to keep smiling through all of this because it is tough. It's tough for a lot of people. And, um, you know, my little community, I live in, in Rainhill, so it's a really nice community. But there's a lot of, you know, older people, shall we say. So I've been trying to do bits of volunteering. So when I go, you know, shopping or if they need any prescriptions picking up and, and things like that. So just to feel like I'm actually helping in some way while I'm, I'm not working. Yeah, I think it's that, that has the, been the challenge for me, really sort of finding those reference points in the day. And it's not yeah. just it's not just having lunch time where you know you you, you know you stuff your face and stuff like that. It's having yeah. something to do with the morning, something to do with the night. I mean, it just obviously as you know, that career as, as a professional footballer, all the stuff you're doing now. For anyone out there who's sort of struggling with that, have you got any advice for them in regards to, to you know setting up that routine and, and finding that discipline? Yeah, I, I think probably it is. It, the, the main thing is the routine, I think, and also finding something that you can say at the end of the day, like, I feel like I've achieved something or, you know, mine at first was just like getting my garden sorted and getting my house <laughs> sorted, you know, things I've been meaning to do for like four years. Yeah. So I'm a bit of a geek and I wrote like a list of things that I needed to do. So it was like, I wanted to change my garage into a gym. So that was the first thing that I've, I've been meaning to do for like four years. And I got that sorted within sort of three or four days. And then it was like, I need to paint my fences. I need to do my shed. You know, just like I say, nothing sort of major or important. But at the end of the day, you go, wow, I've actually done something. I've achieved yeah. something today. So that, that was my way of, of coping with it. Because it is hard. You know, you, you're missing your family and your friends and you're missing going out and doing normal things. So it's just a case of trying to, I suppose, speak to people as much as you can, whether it's through Zoom, whether it's, you know, just WhatsApp and phoning people. And um, I've probably spoke to my mates more than I, I do when I'm working, you know, because you're just <laughs> too busy, aren't you, doing your own thing? And, and they're too busy doing their own thing. So it's, it's been nice to catch up, not face to face, but nice to catch up through various different outlets. Have you done tons of family quizzes and stuff like that? Oh, yeah. my goodness. I'm starting yeah. to get quizzed out myself now, to be honest. I mean, I'm going to do three or four a week. <laughs> yeah, 
I'm the same. And we were doing like a little challenge every day as well. So like on the family WhatsApp group, we had to set a challenge. So it might be, I think what was the last, uh, we've done like dances and we've done, the last one was trying to make a, a self-isolation hat. So it was, uh, we, I think in um, in China when the kids went back to school, they they made their own hats, so they oh, knew yeah. like how far like the distance to be away from each other. So we had to make that. That was a couple of days ago, you know. So that's kept you busy and kept you engaged with like people that you're not seeing. So yeah, but I'm totally quizzed out as well. <laughs> what did your self isolation <laughs> hat look like? <laughs> I had a cone um, and then I had, uh, I think it was, two, you know, the flippers. I had two flippers stuck to the side. <laughs> so I thought they were about two meters. So yeah, I won't be sending that out on anything. <laughs> I just love that you've got a cone and two flippers lying around your house. <laughs> <laughs> and then what does that say about you? <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. But I think, I think it's, again, it's, it's one of them, isn't it? I think speaking to people for these videos, it, you know, I think there's people who've sort of taken this time to rest and recuperate who maybe, you know, the stress yeah. work and stuff like that. And, and obviously that's absolutely fine. And there's people who've gone the other way and got, you know, like yourself and got especially yeah. active. And, you know, anyone who's been on your Twitter feed recently would have seen that you're doing 100K. Well, you and Lee were doing 100K in May challenge. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how on earth you managed to do that? Because it sounds like yeah. a lot of distance to run. <laughs> Yeah, well, Steph Horton, who's, who's one of my good friends, who's the uh, England ladies captain. Um, so I've known Steph for, for years, really. We, we played at the same club together. We played international together. And um, unfortunately, her husband got diagnosed with motor neurone disease a couple of years ago. So, you know, it was obviously we were all completely devastated for her. And, and we didn't really know what to do. You know, you want to help, but you, you don't actually know how to help. So um, as soon as she, she sort of set this thing up, and it was only going to be for it's like sort of 20, 30 people to run 100K in May and just try and raise a little bit of, of money for Motor Neurone because I don't know if you know, but the, there isn't a cure for yeah. it and they need a lot more sort of research and, and awareness around it. So as soon as I found out she was doing that, I was like, right, want to help, want to try and raise as much money as I can. And, and I think a lot of the girls did exactly the same. So something that was an idea of maybe 20 people, there's now something like 350 people doing it and oh. they've raised over, I think, 130,000 pounds. So it's brilliant, you know, for the, the Derby Rimmer found foundation and it, it just like say helps to, to raise that awareness and, and helps to raise money to hopefully find a cure because it's a it's an awful disease and, and like say you just want to support Steph and Stephen because I've got to know Stephen through Steph and and all of the other you know famous people are not are not famous people that we, we all know that are, are suffering from it so yeah so again it's, it's something I suppose it, it's part of my routine now that I know I've got to do so much so much distance a week and just try to sort of mix it up so it's not just plodding around it's you know yeah. Doing, it, doing like sort of mileage in a, in a different way so yeah so I suppose it, it's a small part but you know feel like we're helping it a little bit oh absolutely massively so and um, where are you up to on it now in regards to taking off the miles I think I'm something like 37k so uh, what I've tried to do is do like 25 a week yeah. so I, I quite simple like workout isn't it you know 100k in May so if, if I do 25 a week so I think I was just over 25 last week so I think I'm on 37, so I'm going to do another five today. So I might just mix it up doing a bit of like three-quarter pace. And I, I'm just used to football training, so to plod, I really struggle. So I have to do different things. And yeah, so it's trying to look after my knees and my ankles. <laughs> like 20 odd years of playing football, that's it. They're, they're not great. But it's we've got like a little WhatsApp group. So um, there's a few ex-pro footballers. There's a few pro footballers, I think, still, still playing um, on there. And, and it's getting quite competitive, you know, with their 5K times. They're trying yeah. to like trying to get under 20 and stuff so I'm trying not to get competitive <laughs> well I, I, I don't know if you've seen on on Twitter there's an account I, I won't say that in fact it's, it's fine it's called Strava Wankers have you seen it yes yeah I have <laughs> I think it, I think it got set up after Ross Barkley's um 16 minute time or something like that I mean I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say whether he did it or not I don't know <laughs> but I think it there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of there's the time run isn't it and then the time elapsed yeah. A lot of people That's the sharing thing. the time elapsed time. Yeah, see, I'm not sure about it either because there's been a couple of times because I've used Strava just because it's the only thing that I know how to use, you know, that, that measures your, your distance. Um, but yeah, there's a few you see sometimes and you think, <laughs> wow, have they got that? Like, I've just been running like as quick as I can. So I'm trying not to post any times. I'm just trying to just do my 100K and, and yeah, not get into that, that, um, that competitive streak. 
<laughs> Brilliant stuff. I mean, it's, it's interesting you, you said that um, in regards to the type of exercise you're doing because um, we had somebody on recently who plays football as well and sort of saying how changing from doing that sort of exercise where you're effectively chasing a ball around to going yeah. and running, you know, people might just think of it as exercise, but it is completely different, isn't it? Is, is oh, that, it is. is you know, no one as many as football as you do is. There, there are a lot of football it's just not like running because, because of that. it's just so different to, to yeah. playing the sport yeah see I've always I, I've always loved training I've always been a trainer so when I finished playing I didn't just stop you know I've heard so many footballers just go I've, I've trained for so many years like I've hammered the gym I've hammered my running just can't be bothered anymore yeah. whereas like I've always enjoyed it and I've always felt good so I've always continued to do it but sort of when everything's okay, I'm more of a sort of go to the gym, like hit sessions, play five side twice a week. So they're normally my training. So I think to change from that, so now I do, I do hit Zoom, Zoom sessions and I do um, like just running and different types of running. So yeah, there's, a, there's some footballers that don't like running. Um, but if I could, if I could play five sides all day, every day, I would choose that. You know, I could, I could play five side for hours and hours, whereas I couldn't just run for hours and hours. Yeah. So I suppose that's the difference, isn't it? It's just how you've been brought up, I suppose, isn't it? You know, I've played football from being like five years old, so yeah. it's uh, yeah, it's in you to, to do that. Brilliant stuff. Um, let, let, let's have a chat about um, your punditry work that you've been doing over the last few years. I mean, I was, I was thinking the other day about, you know, you've sort of been like on, on my television screens for so long. The first time I've seen you <laughs> doing a, a punditry role was on Wayne Rooney Street Soccer. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, God, yeah, that was a few years ago. That was about 2008. I believe yeah, I, was, it was. I was looking it up, up yesterday. I mean, just, just first yeah. of all, what, what was that like? I mean, was Wayne, really, was, was he happy to be in front of the cameras? Because I remember watching that thinking, he looks a little bit shy here. Whereas you and Andy were like, you know, we're really comfortable yeah. with the time and comfortable giving the analysis and Wayne looked a little bit shy. Yeah, do you know, I loved doing that. It was brilliant. We had to like go for an audition for it as well. So it, it come up like they approached a few female footballers and like who was interested in doing it. And I've always loved the media. So even when I've been playing, I've always never shied away from interviews always wanted to, to do it because just enjoyed it really so when this come up I thought this is a you know great thing to do and, and get involved in and um yeah it was just it was just a fun show and like obviously seeing some of the kids and some of the skills that they could yeah. do was, was just unbelievable and and Wayne was great such a nice lad but really shy and and probably just a little bit aware of people around him. And, and you can understand why, you know, he didn't want to say too many things, but he knew Andy answer. So he'd done some stuff with him. Yeah. So he was really chilled out with us. Um, and yeah, just, just really down to earth. And it was funny because the producers couldn't actually say to him, could he do any of the tasks? So me and Andy could do it because, you know, as the insurance pit wise, it yeah, wasn't, yeah. you know, it wasn't, if, if we rolled our ankles, it wouldn't have been too bad. But with Wayne, they couldn't, but he wanted to do them all. So there was one, I don't know if you remember the tower block challenge yeah, where they dropped the ball. And pass it in the skin. Yeah. So I was all right for the first two levels. When it got like to the really high level, it was pinging off everywhere. He did it first time. Like literally what they showed on the screen where it came down, he chested it sort of on his knee and then volleyed it into the skiff first time. And everyone was like, oh, how many takes did that take? Nah, he was like... He just loved his football. You know, he just, what they were saying, oh, we can't ask you to do it. And he's like, no, no, I want to go. We want to try it. Yeah. So um, he, he must have been a pleasure to, to work with for that. Um, yeah, and he, he was really good with the kids. And again, that's, I always like look at how people are, you know, like off the camera and, and yeah. how they are it's nice with people. And um, the kids loved him. And, you know, he was just great with them. And um, yeah, it was just a, a good show. It was a shame it didn't continue, to be honest. Yeah, the, the the tower block bit is the bit of it that's like etched in my memory because I remember, I remember the kids being in awe of him when he did it. Yeah. Like, oh, oh my god, yeah. amazing! And I, I remember yeah. before that you could just see when he was standing there watching it, he was just itching to have a go. You could yeah, see it in his body language. He was like, "There's a football, I've got to go and kick it." Yeah. Go and, yeah. it. and that's why he's he's such a good player because yeah. I think he just loves the game, doesn't he? You know, he just absolutely loves playing football and. I think that he's one of them that if there was a ball, he would go and kick it. He would go and do some skills with it or, you know, you just can't resist if it's there. So that, it's just in him, isn't it, to, to play. Yeah, and you said there you've always been interested in the media and stuff like that, even when, even when you were playing. Was, yeah. was getting involved in punditry something that you actively drove yourself during your playing career and towards the end of your playing career that you were actively looking to get into or did someone come to you and say, did you fancy giving this a go? 
Yeah, it's pretty much, I, I, I drove it. I think I, I spoke to her. So my agent, when, you know, when I thought it, it's probably coming to an end, my career, you know, getting on a little bit and slowing down. And she, she sort of spoke to me and was like, you know, you need to actively do as many things. So if someone asks you to do it, go and do it, do different things. So don't just do co-commentary. Don't just do, you know, the, the punditry, do as many uh, like reporting, whatever you can do, do it. And um, so, yeah, I tried to do that while I was still playing. It was difficult trying to fit it in and around because football was obviously like my priority. And then as soon as I finished, yeah, it was just a case of whenever they asked you to do something to do it. And, and sometimes it could be last minute and it's very little prep. But um, yeah, it was, it was just quite difficult. I suppose going from, um, you know, obviously football being a, you know, a very male dominated thing and, and trying to push the women's game and, and trying to, you know, I suppose just get women's football to a level that it is now uh, to then going into media which was was very similar you know sort of working with all guys and um I, I suppose just the criticism that that I get you know get a lot of stuff on on social media which is hard so you know I'll, I'll talk about women's football and that's fine but I suppose when I talk about the men's game some people just don't like that and and it's difficult you know when you've, you've done so much prep and you've worked so hard and then you look at your social media and you think oh like, is it all worth it? But mm. I just love it. I, I just, I, I just really enjoy doing it. You just got to have, got to have broad shoulders, I suppose, and um, you know, sort of keep going as much as you can. I mean, it's it's, it's ridiculous, and you know, we we do a show here on on the Blue Room called Women on the Ball, where we speak to some of the Everton uh, women's team. You know, the, the oh, captain Graham and the captain about their their just just what it's like being footballers, and yeah. from their point of view, they they. You know, I, I, I was ignorant to myself in regards to how difficult it is for women to get involved in football from yeah. a young age in regards to playing and, and, and yeah. that, that, you know, how difficult that is. So I imagine it's the same going into the punditry arena as well, because like you said, it, it is yeah. very male dominated. And it's, it's interesting to hear you say that, you know, that, that Twitter stuff gets you down because, you know, it, it would. But I, I see you on the television as somebody who played the game who is sort of bulletproof in regards to the opinions and it comes across really well. I mean, that must be oh. horrible for you when, when, when that sort of thing happens. But, I, I, you know, yeah. I just sort of had it in my head that you, you just brush that off. But, but why should you? Yeah, no, that's really nice of you to say. And, and most of the time I do. And, and, you know, you might have like, you might have, say, 10 comments and nine of them might be really nice. And you just remember that one horrible one. And, and you just think you shouldn't. And, and like you say, all the way through your football career, you have to be able to take criticism yeah. and you have to just brush things off and go again. And, and I suppose that's what you're, you know, that's what you're, you're trained to do if you like, but sometimes it does, yeah, it does get you down a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's, you can imagine sort of a, a female going into, into punditry maybe for the first time or going into reporting. I remember doing a BBC final score for the first time and I had to go into like, um, I think it was, I can't remember what ground it was now. Um, it was a championship round and I, I went in and literally the whole of the press room was just men and I'm really comfortable you know like like talking yeah. to guys being around guys loads of my best mates are guys that I played football with from being young so I was quite happy with that but I remember talking to another female reporter and she said she struggled for like the first season of doing it she, she just felt awkward she felt like people were looking at her and you know just for being different um, whereas now it's, it's so much more there's you know there's a lot more female reporters out there so yeah, I suppose yeah, being a female going into that can be quite tough. But if you want to do something, you've just got to sometimes just brush all those things off. Yeah, and I suppose you must be, you, you must look up like a body of work in regards to obviously your playing career with punditry as well. And certainly what you're doing with Sky at the moment in regards to obviously the women's football show is, is, is being launched. Yeah. You've been, I've been on that this week, you know. I think Sky have been, have been really good in regards to, to giving you guys a, a platform as, as they yeah. the should do and you know which and you know you guys are all fantastic in that regard but you know you must be proud of the way in which you've, you've helped the the coverage of, of the game the women's game and the men's game on sky yeah sky have been brilliant they they sort of just give you different opportunities you know that maybe i thought i would never get like the, the yeah. monday show has been brilliant with with obviously when dermot comes in i know loads of people love watching the uh, the ref watch I get so many messages from my mates, like particularly like the Blues going, you need to ask him about this. Why did they give this decision? Why did they do that? So I bombard him sometimes yeah. when he comes in. And uh, bless him because he's such a nice guy, but obviously can only say so many things, you know, on the, on the TV because he still works within that, you know, the refereeing community and stuff. So, um, yeah, it, Sky have been great. And like I say, they're, they're trying to push the women's game as well. So doing this women's football show, I think because there's not, not much on at the moment as well, it's give them another chance to, to do that. So I think half an hour every Sunday they're going to do this show. So, yeah, it, it's just great to be involved and, and 
you know, great to keep pushing the women's game, but also just, you know, chatting in the men's game. Because I, I love male pundits in the women's game. You know, so I think it's nice to have a balance. It just gives different opinions, different perspectives. And, um, you know, I've worked with Dion Dublin quite a few times. And, you know, he's brilliant at just giving a different perspective. So when I've heard him talking, he might have, I don't know, maybe Alex Scott might be doing, you know, the, the punditry with him. And I just think it fits. I just think it works well. So, yeah, I'm all for male pundits in the women's game and, and female pundits in the men's game. I just think if you're good and you do your prayer, I don't see why you shouldn't be able to talk about it. But again, some people disagree with that. Yeah, but and that, that, that I think must be the, you know, I imagine the most frustrating thing for you. And I think that's why people come and, and you know, listen to, to, to stuff like this, fan-led stuff, because you, you must you must occasionally look at a, a pundit or a male pundit on, on any sort of platform who's clearly not done the research, who's clearly just clotting out trees. <laughs> and you must think, why on earth am, am I getting grief and, and they're not? Because it, it, it does my head in as well, and I'm not even in that industry like you. <laughs> but like that's the thing. I think it's so important to talk to fans. I think because you guys go and watch the game on a regular basis, and and that's you know I'm an Everton fan, but probably don't get to the game as much as I'd like to get to just because I'm working. So I think somebody that goes to the game every week <laughs> understands a little bit more. So I, I always. I always try and chat to somebody that is a season ticket holder or watches them week in, week out, because I just think it, it gives a different perspective um, than just, you know, reading a report from yeah. somebody that's maybe watched them once. Um, and I do that with all the teams, you know, not just, you know, the, the teams that I'm covering. I try and get like a perspective and, um, yeah, I, I go in with like notes like that. I don't use half of them, but I just feel like that's my little comfort blanket. And sometimes you get things wrong. Sometimes you make mistakes and, and that happens. And it, as long as you feel you've done everything you can, you can't really do any more, can you, I suppose? Yeah. Would you still get people like maybe sneering at you a little bit for having notes and doing prep? Is, is there still that sort of culture in there? or? Uh, do you know, they've always been great with me. They do laugh at me with my amount of notes. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but they have always been lovely. Because um, yeah. like I say, I think the first time I did Soccer Special and Soccer Saturday, I think one of the first ones I did was with like, you know, a lot of the, the old boys that have been there for years. So, yeah. you, you know, your Matt Letitia, your Paul Merson, Charlie Nicholas. And I was a bit like, a bit in awe of them because I was like, God, I've watched you for, for years on Soccer Saturday and now I'm working with you. And I was a little bit nervous, but they were brilliant. They were like, do you need any help? Do you need yeah. any? And they've just done it for so long that they probably don't need notes. I know you always need to prep and you always need to update, but they're just so relaxed, you know, going on. And I'm like looking through, making sure I've got my teams wrote out and stuff. Yeah. And um, I suppose the more you do it, the more relaxed you'd be and, and probably the, the less prep you need to do. But um, yeah, those guys have, have just done it for so long. Yeah, and just, just one more thing on this. One of the things that Kate always, Kate hosts our women on the board show, always says to, to the girls at Everton and, you know, some of the, the girls involved in, in punditry is that you, you guys, in regards to what you do and now the pundits and the players are effectively the, the first generation that's really carrying this forward in regards to, to women's football and, you know, helping yeah. expedite the, the growth of it. And I, I imagine with that in mind, I mean, you sort of span both in regards to your playing career and you've won the tree career. Do you feel a, a bit of a, a sense of responsibility with, with that in mind? Um, I, I, don't know, I suppose I've been quite lucky that I've, I've seen everything with, with the women's game. So I suppose when I was playing, when I first started, like having to play for a local boys team because there wasn't any girls teams around and then sort of moving on from that. I don't know, having to pay to play. So when I was at Tranmere, I was, I was you know, paying my subs every week, but we were still playing at the top level of the game. And then gradually going into actually getting paid to play so sort of semi-pro so I was at uni but I was also playing and, and getting a little bit of money for it and then going full-time pro which I suppose you know I feel quite lucky that I've, I've gone through that you know I've had to work hard and I've seen it grow and I've, I've seen it develop to, to a game now that you know these players can earn a decent amount of money where they can they can actually live from it now you know they don't have to do their own little jobs in and around they can live from just playing football so I suppose I've been lucky that I've, I've seen that and, and seen the growth. And, you know, I always, if I ever speak to any players, I always say, look at like your dual career. Don't, don't sort of think I can be a female footballer and that's it. It's going to set me up for life because yeah. it's not like it is in the men's game. You know, you, you can earn millions and millions of pounds in the men's game. And if you're sensible, that can set you up for life. Whereas in the women's game, it's not a case. If you finish, if you get an injury, if, if your manager doesn't like you, you always need something else to go into. So I'd always try and stress that to, to players because, Unfortunately, we're not at that, you know, level where 
you finish playing and you go brilliant I can just relax now and, and do what I want with all my money um so yeah it, it's it's nice to have been part of it and I suppose it's similar now in the in the punditry and the media side where you're trying to I suppose just give opportunities and, and ways for you know if they see a female on the tv you know I've had quite a lot of like you know people from university journalists yeah. and things say like seeing you on there gives us a little bit of not inspiration but you know that a, a woman can do it and a woman can work on sky and you know so I suppose the more more you can do the more opportunities it gives for, for others so yeah I don't know if it's a responsibility but it's quite nice to mm. to sort of be that that person that's helped you know there's a lot of other people um but to be one of them I suppose is quite nice well I suppose it, it's the fact that people have gone on to you at your university with and said you know this is this is great it's you know this is this is helping me and giving me inspiration as well it's you're sort of setting the example setting the trend which is obviously yeah. obviously amazing uh, let's have a quick talk about footy before we wrap up um <laughs> first, first and foremost um that the derby at Goodison Park, the Everton women's der- Everton Liverpool women's derby. Yeah, it's, gonna, it's just the curse fixture, isn't it? So so, like- so gotten for the girls that that's obviously cancelled because of the weather. Oh. again, just felt devastated for them. Oh, absolutely gutted. You know, I was I was going to go to the game when the weather because we I don't I must have been working for whatever reason and you know as much as I can if you know if there's a, a game on locally I'll I'll try and go and support it and. Obviously, Everton women doing well at the moment. Yeah. You know, got a great manager, great coaching staff, got some really good young players. And, you know, it was a case of this is a really good time. Because, again, a few of my um, my mates that are Everton fans were going because they were like, this is brilliant. Get one over on the uh, <laughs> the Reds. <You> know, <laughs> <Yeah>. just, <laughs> we might not do it in the men's game, but we can do it here. Yeah. And they would have got a decent crowd. And, and, and again, it, it just seems to, yeah, like say, it's been the curse fixture, right? the fixture this season. Um, but... Yeah, I just think at the moment that the women's side are going really well and you think yeah. whether this season will finish or not, I don't know. But next season, I think they've certainly got something to, to build on and and hopefully start challenging for things because that's what you want. Everton back up there challenging and um, like I say, good manager, good coaching staff and, and good young players. They seem to have a, a good team spirit at the moment, which I think is you know, massively important. They've, they've picked up some really good results. I've watched them a couple of times this season. So... Um, yeah, but the, the derby, yeah, it's just it's just one of those, isn't it? It will happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get there eventually with it, yeah. You're right yeah. about the, the spirit, you know, seeing, you know, the show's case done with them in regards to, you know, the, the camaraderie and that sort of thing. You've got young players as well, you know, someone like yeah. Chloe Kelly, who's had an unbelievable season, hasn't she? You know, such mm-hmm. a shame that their campaign's been cut short. And, and just, just to finish off on, on the lads, um, obviously finished off with a pretty, well, finished the, this part of the season with a pretty bad result at Chelsea, that 4 0. <laughs> One of the well, probably one of the lowest points of the campaign. Uh, but overall, yeah. are you feeling positive about the direction of the team under Carlo? Yeah, do you know when? Obviously, to get Carlo, just a massive coup, isn't it? You know yeah. the the pedigree, the experience that he's got, and you know I thought the turnaround, to be honest, came when Big Dunk took over. You know, and and I thought he, he just pretty much went back to basics. I did the Chelsea game, and. It was brilliant to cover that on Sky. It was absolutely fun. But again, they were laughing at me because I was jumping around everywhere. Cause <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because you're jumping around and then they yeah. come to you and you've got to be really serious and really calm. And yeah, you know, it was, you have to try to explain everything. You think yeah. I, I, you have to try not to be a fan. But that was a, I thought that was a massive turning point. And then I just think he's then, he's obviously come in with, with a, a similar sort of approach, you know, quite a pragmatic approach. And I just think he needs time. He needs time to get in the players that he wants. To, to instill a style that, that he wants to play but you could pretty much see what he was trying to do and you know I've been so impressed with with uh, Calvert-Lewin how he's like because he's another player that, that's had a bit of criticism you know I've, I've seen quite a bit um, you know just just reading different things and what I get from him is he's a, a proper worker absolute professional wants to work as hard as he can wants to get better and and you just think under the guidance of, of Carlo you just wonder how far he can actually go. You know, him and Richarlison up front were, were brilliant. So, yeah, I, I'm one of those blues, though, that's positive every single season and always get disappointed. So, <laughs> I'm hoping it's not going to be another one of those. But I think with him at the helm, yeah. surely, you know, we've got to be there or thereabouts. The Chelsea yeah. result was horrible. Um, you know, the 4-0 just before um, everything, you know, sort of stopped. But there's been positive signs I've seen anyway. And again, I don't know if that's because I'm looking for those positive signs, but... Um, yeah, hopefully next season can be 
can be the season, but like I say, I say that every single year. So, yeah. <laughs> just just one point on, on Carlo Lewin in regards to you say there about him, you know, being you've heard he's a, he's a real worker, and you can see he's a real worker. What, on yeah. our show is one of the things I've said a lot about him is that I imagine in that group of players, the other lads must love him for the way yeah. he, he plays because it, it it almost seems to me as though he's he's someone who sort of you know, pay, like paid his dues. Like he's gone from being somebody like in, in an office environment and make the tea and he started to, you know, work yeah. his way up a little bit because he, he's done the graft, you know, he's, he ran the channels, he's, you know, took his knocks, yeah. he's brought other people into play and now he's sort of, he's been told to be a bit more, a bit more of a goal scorer and a bit more selfish. Yeah. And I imagine when, yeah. you know, in a, in a dressing room when a young player comes through and is immediately said, well, you're the star of the team, it yeah. might be quite difficult. Whereas I think the fact that he's been able to work his way up by doing those little nitty gritty things has probably put them in good stead with the, the rest of the lads. Do you know what? That's a really, I'd never even thought of that, but that's a really good point because it is, it's a case of, yeah, he's shown what he's about. He's shown it'll work hard for the team and it's, it's not just about him. And, and I suppose the fact now he has been given that, you know, try and stay within the 18 yard box, try and, and be that poacher instead of doing all of your, you know, he'll naturally do that. He'll naturally close down, naturally work back. But actually we want you in the box and we want you scoring goals. And, it seems to be really working for him. So I suppose, yeah, they must love him. And, and I think any player loves a player that works hard and will work for the team and, and give his all for the team. And that's what you've always seen, isn't it? You know, he might not have got the goals that, that we wanted him to get. And, you know, it, it might have pinged off him now and again. But actually, the, the progression that he's made in this season, I, I think, has been phenomenal. And, and you just, it's a shame that it's actually stopped now. Because you think he was, he sort of seemed to be getting better and better. Maybe he needed that little break, um, not as long as we, we, we you know, we've, we've got. But um, you just hope next season he can, he can kick on, and, and some of the other players can, can kick on. Brilliant stuff. Uh, Sue, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Yeah, we've gone well beyond 20 minutes. I apologise. Time, time. Oh, sorry. That's time, me chatting. Time. It's, it's me. It's absolutely, <laughs> absolutely my fault. Uh, just reminiscing about Wayne Rooney, Street Striker and all that sort of thing. It's, Brilliant. It's my fault. But um, uh, anyone who's, who's watching this on YouTube or listening to it on the podcast, I'll put the link in regards to where you can donate to Sue and doing all the running. Uh, oh, thank you. So do get onto that. But um, it's been fascinating speaking to you and, and hopefully we can get you back on again very soon. Definitely. Thanks a lot, Matt.